Okay, hello. Uh, first question, is there anybody in the room who does not understand German? Okay, so we do it in English. <laughs> Don't get confused by the German title, the rest of the slides is in English. <laughs> so, <laughs> my name is Hartmut. Wrong button. <laughs> I'm from Bielefeld in Germany. Yes, the city does exist. <laughs> And I originally studied computer science and electric engineering and somehow got into this OpenStreetMap and map thing some 12 years ago. Um, almost 12 years. <laughs> and in my day job, I'm working as a data bias support engineer and do not do anything map related at all. And today I will show you how to easily create printable maps like this one from OpenStreetMap using a hopefully simple web interface. And I actually have given this talk here two times in the previous two years uh, already. So has anybody been in the previous versions of it? Okay. <laughs> so I won't uh, especially mention the things that I have new from my last year, but you may swap them. <laughs> so whenever I moved into a new home in recent years, one of the first things I always did was to get a city plan and just have it uh, on a wall in my new flat to go find my way around in the new neighborhood. And I still do that now in our current flat, but <laughs> As I've been living there for two, uh, 10 years now, I do not use that one that often anymore. But I also, a few years ago, got this large printer that you may have seen in the uh, at the uh, uh, OS Geo booth. And so I decided to use that one to create my own neighborhood map too. And I also did this for our refugee shelters a few years ago when we had all the refugees from Syria coming into Germany and had uh, sports halls and factory halls uh, reused as temporary refugee shelters. As originally we had just planned to put out the official city map and put some stickers on it. But as you can see, Bielefeld is not population-wise, but area-wise, it's a pretty big place. So you don't see that much detail on this large map. Uh, so we started to do these uh, neighborhood maps instead that just had the local neighborhood in a higher resolution and had important points of interest like next, next bus stop, next post box, next phone booth, and local shops and pharmacies as markers on the map and also listed on the side here. Uh, so it's not that big here, but you can see there are markers here on the map. These markers are numbered. and uh, They're also here on the side, ordered by number and by category, like uh, local transportation, shopping, pharmacies and doctors. And for each marker, you also find the information in which map square you're going to find that place. So for this, we needed to have a way to print our large scale OpenStreetMap information. And the very first idea, plan A was, let's just do a screenshot and print that. Doesn't work if you go large scale. It works on a A4 or letter format printer, but not on uh, this scale. So plan A was immediately canceled and Next thing we tried was to use the export function we have on the OpenStreetMap website itself. So if you go for this share icon here, you can define a map area and choose the, the output format. So you can choose PDF or SVG to be able to uh, modify the result. And that already worked a little bit better, but it had some problems as First of all, you can only use the default OpenStreetMap style for that. It doesn't even export the humanitarian style or the transport style that is also available on the website. 
and you never get the right aspect ratio for the paper format, and you have to manually specify the scale and resolution. So that's a guessing game to get that right, and require too many manual steps to get right. So we continued to search, and I ended up on the Map Osmatic website back then. And this was a project started by some French students in 2009. For some years, they built up a web service that mostly did what we needed. And it's implemented using Python and Cairo Graphics and Mapnik. So it's using the same rendering stack as OpenStreetMap itself uses for creating the map tiles. And so we can reuse all the styles that OpenStreetMap uses if these are open sourced. But unfortunately, this site is no longer functional. So I had to set up my own version of it. And the fine thing about if this solution is it also supports SVG, uh, PDF, and PNG. So you can post-process the output. It also extends the map area so that it perfectly fits the available paper space. So makes it a bit wider or a bit higher to perfectly fill the paper. And it picks the right zoom factor and the right resolution to make it look really good on paper. And optionally, it even can create a street index for the area you render. And it can even produce a multi-page output, so it can have sort of a street atlas-like of paper book. And on each individual map page, you then have small numbers on the side that tell you on which page the, the map continues. And it also has a more detailed street index in the end. But that was not the part I was interested in. I was only interested in the single page large form of printing. Um, so as it showed that the site was getting more and more unreliable, I started to set up my own instance. As all the components were open sourced, it shouldn't be too, uh, too difficult, should it? Well, it? Turned out it was a bit more tricky than I originally thought as the installation instructions depended on a rather old version of Ubuntu by then. And a lot of components still required manual compilation. And took a bit of work to all, get all that uplifted to a more current version of Ubuntu. And the advantage of that was that all the components needed worked with Ubuntu packages out, the box, out of the box now. And nothing needed to be compiled manual anymore. So this is what my own site is. I have to come up with a shorter domain name for it at one, one day. <laughs> so it sort of looks like the original one. It just has a different color scheme here as so I updated the JavaScript libraries it depended on too. And when you click on create a map there, you first get four different choices how to start. The default one is you just pick a rectangular map area to be rendered, but you can also go for the city search tab, and you can search for a city, city name there, and if it is known in OpenStreetMap and the city borders are known to OpenStreetMap too, you get it uh, in black in the select box here, and the gray ones are places that are known to OpenStreetMap but only have a place node and not the, not the city borders. And if you pick the area to render that way, the result will look like this. So we have the city itself inside the city borders rendered in original colors, and everything outside of it is with a dark shadow about it. So you can spot where the city actually ends. And the street index is only for the city area. But you can also see the neighborhood still. And there's also a choice I added that was not in the original 
the software is you can now upload a GPX file. I started that last year already, so it was in last year's talk too, but it has improved a bit. As you now can select it up front. And on the client side, it's already validated that that is a valid GPX file. Originally, you would get weird error messages from the vendor if you uploaded something else. Now it will only let you upload GPX files. And also before doing the actual upload, you get a preview of the track you uploaded. And the map area is already pre-selected to fit the track with a little bit of extra space. So this track rendered would then look like this here. You have a normal Mac background and you have the track in red here with some yellowish text marker style extra markup to make it really stand out on the map. Um, also new that was not there in the last year. So this is a new feature. You can also use, oh, I skipped one slide, I think. Yep. You can also use a map you created on the UMAP service, which is like the Google personalized maps, where you can put your own markers and your own polygons and lines and stuff. And on the UMAP side, you can then share the map. This gives you this menu. And here on the lower part, you have download the full map data. So if you download that, you get a JSON file that has all the information about the map you created. And this again can be uploaded to the service. Oh, skipping slides here. So, so again, it will give you a preview of the area needed to show all features and give you a feature preview here. So in the web interface, it does not use the styles and colors and icons. This is just to give you an idea of the area covered. But in print, it looks pretty similar to what you created on UMAP. So you have your markers, your marker styles, your marker icons. You have the areas using almost the same colors. The red line here is a bit smaller on than on the previous screenshot, but that is due to the higher print resolution. And don't get confused by the small letters here. That's the rendering bug in the PNG output of the renderer that I need to solve. But if you use the P uh, PDF or the SVG output, the letters will be in the correct side, uh, size. So this can be used, for example, if you want to show some directions how to get to your company, your home, whatever, or want to have your own themed map with your own point of interest markers that are not in OpenStreetMap itself. Um, so after we selected the map area to print in one of the ways shown, the next step then is to choose the map layout. So there's always a small preview here, not of the area you choose. These things are pre-rendered just to give you an idea how the result roughly look li looks like. And here you can choose single page without street index, single page with street index on the bottom or on the right, or this multi-page atlas booklet format. Then the next part of the form is choosing a map style. Originally, Mapsmatic had some five styles to choose from. I tried to support as many of the Mapnik styles that were having the source publicly available. I will have a slideshow of the different slides later. So you just you pick one style from the list, you get a preview. When you're fine with what you see, you go to the next form step. And that allows you to select one or more overlay styles that will be put on top of the base map. So like on the plan we have seen in the beginning, you can have uh, local hiking routes as an overlay. And I'm taking that style from the Waymarked Trails website that does that for, for the web. And there's also others that I will describe in detail later. So these will just be put on top of uh, the base map you choose in the previous step. 
And then you have to choose the paper size. This is calculated from the choices you made earlier. We will only be given choices that will be large enough for your map to be printed. So here it starts with German DIN A4 up to DIN A0. What we've seen on the wall is a DIN A1. DIN A0 is exactly a square meter in typical paper uh, proportions. And we also have US letter or the as a final selection uh, best fit is really just large enough for the map area you choose and may not be a standard paper format. So it may be a square format or whatever. And in rare cases, if you pick a really large area, you will only be given the best fit option because none of the other formats is really large enough anymore. And also you can choose a portrait or a landscape mode. It will be pre-selecting the, the optimal format. So if your uh, map is more wide than high, it will choose uh, landscape. If it's more high than wide, it automatically will choose and suggest portrait, but you can choose the other one if you really want. And then we get to the final step. And final step. Here you have a few more choices. You can define the map title that will be printed on top. If you had chosen uh, city borders or uploaded a uh, UMAP, it will take the uh, city name or the UMAP map title as default, but it, you can still change it. And you can choose the language. This is mostly just the language for the copyright notice on the bottom of the page. But we started experimenting now, and at least the German style will also try to localize the map content based on the language you choose. We'll see that in the next slide. And the final one is if you do not want to wait for the rendering result, as it may take a few minutes, or for the multi-page booklets, maybe it can up take up to an hour. If it takes longer than an hour, the job is canceled. But it can take that long. So if you don't want to wait for it, watch your screen for finally showing finished. You can give an email address and a notification will be sent to that email address when the rendering is finished or if it ran into a timeout or error. And if it finished, you will get a, a link in the mail that links to the results. And this mail is only stored for 24 hours so that I can ask back if something went wrong. But after 24 hours, all email addresses are removed from the server again for privacy reasons. So I don't store your uh, email longer than I need it for debugging if something went wrong. So, whoop. so this is an example of the localization features we did in the German style. Or actually, Sven Gegos, the maintainer of the German style, did most of the work. Good. So this is a place in Japan I've been on vacation two years ago. And you can see almost everything here is rendered in Japanese. There's just this shop and this charger station that has an English name, only an English name. So this would be what a default OpenStreetMap also looks like, as it always tries to render lo the local name. but. If you do not choose Japanese as language, as is the default for a place in Japan, but choose uh, uh, English instead, you see the hotel name here is suddenly really printed in English, Seaside Hotel. And the name of this bus station that is only available in Japanese, but it is at least transliterated into Latin characters. So you can at least pronounce it if you want to ask for a uh, local for it. <laughs> um, so this is only available in the German style right now, but Sven has also worked on making it uh, function in the OpenStreetMap default style. And if that works out fine, we will also try to modify all the other styles I have on choice to also support this. So this is an overview of all the maps, almost all the map styles on support. So this is the OpenStreetMap standard style as it is on the OpenStreetMap website. Then we have 
the German version, which uses uh, mostly different street colors to more, uh, be more like what we're used to from German maps. Then there is a French version. There's also a Swiss and a Belgian version that I support now, which I don't have slides for yet. And this is a style sheet that came with the Mapposmatic web front end as an example. I still offer this, but I don't really think it's that much suitable for printing. Uh, this is an older, more open source style published by uh, the company MapQuest. Uh, this op OS Bright is a style offered by Mapbox. And they especially offer it to be used as a, as a starting point if you want to create your own map style. So it's meant to be a change to your needs. But it's also uh, a style I like because it has a little less contrast in the colors. Then we have the humanitarian style that is used by the humanitarian OpenStreetMap project. And we have the hike bike map that is mostly meant for walking, taking hikes, or taking a bicycle tour. So it has some features in it like showing you picnic places and benches and putting a bit more focus on trails and less on highways. So it's a good basis for having a hiking map like the one on the wall. Things. Then we have the open topo map. That is a style that tries to be close to the style we used from official German topographic maps. Um, and, well, skip. So the fine thing about this one is it has contour lines. So you see mountains and slopes. And have get, get, get a rough idea of the landscapes. 3D properties. Um, this the open river boat style is mostly optimized for people taking boat trips. So it has a focus on facilities near rivers and uh, lakes, like uh, gas stations for motorboats instead of gas stations for cars. And it has uh, special symbols for water gates and facilities like that. And then we have one style that is especially made for skiing. So in this area, you don't see any skiing facilities. So I have a different one here. So you can see you have the ski lifts in here. And you have the different ski routes by, by the level of difficulty. So blue one, red one. Uh, there's no black one here. Ah, there's one black one here, most difficult ones. And this map also has a bit of hill shading. I do not have enough uh, disk space right now to have it for the full planet. So I only have it for the Alps right now. If you want to go in skiing in a different country or a different place, you won't get this hill shading information, unfortunately, yet. Uh, yeah, that's a style that was originally created for Twitter. Also a low contrast style. Uh, pencil style is sort of a simulation of drawing a map with a pencil by hand. So it's more like an artistic project, not really meant for serious maps. But, and one of the most recent additions is uh, the toner style, which is very high contrast, mostly using just black and white at 50% gray. So you get a really good high contrast map out of a laser printer, uh, a monochrome laser printer. So that was the collection of map styles. And then we also have the map overlays. Um, first of all, I have all the hiking and bike route overlays from the Waymark Trails website using the same style and the same icons. So here you have different hiking routes with the root symbol. Uh, there was still a little bug here. This is fixed by now. The symbols went out of the frame. You won't get that anymore. Uh, then we have the open public transport overlay. 
that gives you rail routes in black, bus routes in red, with the route numbers in it. Uh, it is not as fancy as the transport style in OpenStreetMap, but the one on OpenStreetMap, unfortunately, is not open source. So I can, can't have that one. I can only provide this one, but it's also not too bad. And we also have a overlay that renders uh, rails in this almost the same way as the open railway map. So here you only have the rail system in Passau, but you see different colors for different types of rail tracks, and it even has, can even render historic uh, rail tracks that do not exist anymore, where you only have the, the tracks, or the original track, but without the actual track on it. Uh, we have quite a few of these in Germany that got reused as bicycle routes because rail routes are usually pretty flat. Oh. Um, this one is called a uh, Schwarzplan in Germany. This is often used by city planners to just get an idea and an overview of the building density in the city. So it only renders building shapes in black and nothing else. But you can still see something must be here that prevents buildings from being built. So probably a, uh, a river or a mountain range or something. And it can also be used to just print maps with all the title and let people guess which city is this. Uh, this one is showing uh, max speeds. So that is taken from the ITOMO max speed map using the same color scheme. So green is up to 30 kilometers, orange is up to 50, red is up to 70. You can see here that a lot of streets in the area have reduced speed for 30 kilometers only. And then, this was actually the first overlay I created, and this is showing fire hydrants. That is our recreation of the open fire map style. And it shows you all the fire hydrants here different types, the round ones are underground, the one with the arrow on top are pillars. For some we have the diameter of the water pipe below it, and we also show the actual fire stations here. Um, this was the very first version of that style, really only putting uh, icons on it. And this is how a mapnik style actually looks like in Mapnik XML. So we have a map here with transparent background, so that we see the base map for it. We have a style named fire hydrant that just defines a point symbolizer showing a fire hydrant icon, and only up to a certain zoom level. And then we have a layer named fire hydrant that uses the fire hydrant style to render the result of this database query. That query queries the OpenStreetMap point data for points that have an attack emergency equals fire hydrant. So this gives you all the fire hydrants in the map area, and this tells how to actually show the results as icons on the position. And this part down here is just the information how to connect to the database that has the OpenStreetMap data to render this in it. And um, this is a style I created last year that is based on the surveillance by surveillance web map that renders uh, surveillance cameras and tries to estimate the area that is covered by the camera. So this is in my neighborhood. These are three publicly placed dome cameras that have a 360 area of view and you never know in which direction it actually looks like right now. And this is a fixed camera that looks in this direction, so it roughly covers this area. It obviously will only cover up to the building front here, but the style is not that clever. To that. And what we see here is these circles and these arcs. These are actually not uh, possible to render with Mapnik. It does not really have a feature for that yet. So what I, do, what I did here is I do not use just another Mapnik style to put on top. But here I created a plugin interface that allows me to actually use uh, 
Python and the Cairo graphics library directly to draw on top of the map and get the coordinates transformed correctly so that I can use features that the MapNet renderer doesn't have, like these cake piece-like uh, arcs of visibility. And so this, this plugin mechanism is rather easy. There's just a folder that contains uh, all the regular pl the plugins. If you're interested, you can look at the source there. And each plugin only has to uh, implement one method called renderer that gets the renderer context that has all the meta information about the map, like the map area, and it gets the graphic context where the actual drawing has to happen in. What else do we have? Yeah, the neighborhood plans I mentioned earlier for the refugee shelters. We wanted to have an interface for that one that is even easier. We only specify which markers you want to have for points of interest and in which category they are, and then have all of this auto-generated with all, without all the extra steps. So we don't have to choose the style here. Fa paper format was always uh, the largest my printer could do. And for this, there's an extra web interface on this shorter domain name. And there you can specify where your actual point, center point for your neighborhood is. And then you can use the sidebar to place markers. And the map will automatically size to fit all markers. And when you use the print icon, you get, within a minute, you get a complete map with all the markers, with the marker index, with your point of interest, the central point of interest marked, and some extra information on the bottom side. And this reduced the time that we needed to make such a neighborhood plan from several hours using the SVG output from Maposmatic and then manually use Inkscape to put all the markers on it and to create all these sidebar information manually to just use the web interface to put the markers on, put the text in, and then have everything created automatically. Oop. And pretty recent addition that was uh, asked for is, I know also offer a simple API, so you can request maps without having to use the web interface. So if you, for example, want to build your own front end or you have some service that already lets users select map areas, you can also have prints generated for this. And for this, you just pass in a simple JSON file that has the minimum of this information, the map title, the OpenStreetMap ID of the object you want to render, this is either a positive number if it is uh, a line object or a negative number of the OpenStreetMap ID if it is a polygon, uh, polygon relation object. Then you have to give the paper size, the map style to use, the language, if it's not known, it just uses English, and the layout, so plain is single page without index. And when you submit that job via this URL, you either get an error back if you did something wrong, or you get a JSON object back that tells you where, uh, that gives you an API URL where you can check the status of your render job, and then you can pull it in regular intervals until it is done, and then it gives you the URLs for all the different maps you created, like the PDF one, the SVG one, and so if you want to automize it or want to use your own front end, you can use this API now and totally forgot about, forget about the crappy web interface I created. And it's also possible to run your own instance. I created a, a Vagrant setup for that that creates a virtual box, virtual machine, and installs all the pieces that are necessary. 
So you can use that if you want to experiment with your own style sheets, for example, or if you want to work offline, so you can have all the data on your own machine, or if you want to keep your results private because everything you do via the web interface or the API is visible to anyone. So if you want to have some secret information or stuff the public shouldn't really know about, you could use a private instance and use that. And it can, of, of course, also be used to fix bugs or add features if you want to. And if you really wanted to set up your own instance of it, you would need the Mapasmatic software, but you would need, ha need to have a working a setup of Mapnik. You would have to install the Mapnik style sheets yourself. You may need some extra data for coastlines or for elevation data if you want to have these contour lines or hill shading. And you also need to import all the old street map data for the area you want to cover into a postgres database. And you need to set up a local web server and a lot of other small pieces. So to make that stuff easier, to automate it, I created a Vagrant setup for a virtual machine. We just clone the, the setup repository, change into the directory that was cloned. And you have, need to put a OpenStreetMap data file under this given name into the folder. So you can, for example, download all of Germany from the GeoFabric extracts. Or if you really have lots of disk space and lots of time, you can even import the full planet if you want. Uh, then you just say Vagrant up. You obviously need a virtual box and Vagrant installed from that. But if you just say Vagrant up, depending on how much data you want to import here and how fast your internet connection is. Is there a question? Uh, Germany was, if I remember correctly, about 80 to 100 gigabytes. Yeah, so that will start a virtual machine. It will take a while to download all the stuff that is needed. And most of the stuff it downloads, it also caches locally, so if you destroy the virtual machine later and fire it up again, it will then not download all the shape files for coastlines and stuff again. You will have that pre-cached and only download what has changed. And then, still a slide missing there? No. Ah, yeah, there's one thing missing there. And after this has completed, there is a web server running that you can reach on port 8000 on your local machine, and then it will give you the same web interface as the public service, and then you can render maps locally. One more. Yes. Hmm? Sorry. Uh, no, when the Vagrant up, the Vagrant up, it will uh, import the OpenStreetMap PBF file you put into the directory, and it will download shape files like for coastlines and stuff like that. It will not download tiles. It does not, also I do not render tiles, so always render the complete paper area. So that's always on demand and there's no tile data pre-cached. So that is the current status of the software. Oh. And next uh, steps I've planned is to make the, the map grid optional when there is no index. Because that's, some find it uh, confusing, uh, confusing that there is a map grid with the letters and numbers on the side if there is no index to actually reference it. And to, I also want to support more of the features that UMAP has. Uh, I want to support additional uh, import formats like KML as an alternative to GPX. If I can afford a disk space, I want to have field shading for the full planet. 
And maybe most important right now is to have all the map styles internationalized so you can have the uh, maps rendered in your language of choice instead of the default names. And there are also a few things I would like to solve, but I don't know how yet. And one is the, the size of the PNG files I create is limited to about 32,000 by 32,000 pixels. That's a hard limitation in the graphics library used. And I would like to have neighborhood plans that are oriented not to the north, but to the orientation, uh, to the direction you're looking into, like you have in some cities. So this is your neighborhood. This is what you can reach in one minute of walking, five minutes of walking. But unfortunately, MapLink does not support that yet. And I have tried to find a print shop that would allow to submit or uh, render results to have that imported into their uh, print workflow. So you just say, I want this map I generated here, printed there on that material. But the few shops I found so far would only be interested if that would generate at least 100 print shops a day. And that is not realistic at all. So to summarize, what I've learned is to render for paper printing is a bit more challenging than to just do it for the screen. The tools to make it possible exist. Web front end to make it easy is a good idea, hopefully. <laughs> uh, to get it all working took, unfortunately, much longer than I expected. It was like, okay, two or three weeks. It was more like, okay, half a year or a year. But most of it should be solved now. It was frustrating in the beginning, but I think I succeeded in the end and is in a useful state now. Uh, if you have been to the open source booths and have seen the printer there, I think it has been put to good use here on this event already. So that brings me to the end. This is some of the URLs for the projects used. I will also upload the slides in the next half an hour, hopefully. And oh, there should be a question slide. There is one, but you can still <coughs> ask questions. Yep. <laughs> Let's try this now. <laughs> Thank you. I'm interested in printing a booklet. Uh, let me say. Um, from the western part of the Alps and just r roughly estimated 20 pages. Is it possible right uh, now? I want to do a motorcycle trip and have those maps uh, in my tank book sack? No, it's not possible for two reasons. One reason is uh, I can only do about 20 by 20 kilometers maximum. Larger areas take too much time. Okay. And the other we thing is even right now in a smaller resolution, I don't need yeah, that's every the, building that's, and that's the other problem. In the multi page uh, renderer, the resolution is fixed right now. It's always on for a fixed zoom factor. Okay. So that is on the to do list, but unfortunately not very high right now. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Very interesting too. Um, so you said that the print shop would not directly support the output of that. So if I now wanted an A0 map, yeah. I can obviously not just buy a printer or don't want to buy a printer. Uh, so what do no, I... No, it's not that the print shops do not support it. So like this one you saw in the beginning, mm -hmm. that is from a professional oh, print okay, shop. See. But you have to save the PNG or PDF manually, then submit it to their form, so do all the form steps there to choose the size and everything. And so, Some of them offer APIs when you could uh, just transfer a print job to their system and you would only have to fill in the billing information and your delivery address. But that is only available if you get, generate enough volume. So uh, my question then would be, uh, so what, uh, of what do I have to take care in or if I want to get a printer, do I have to make some special settings, some uh, certain resolutions? No. Do you have some experience with that? No, it is for the PNG output. I use a higher resolution by default. So mm -hmm. the PNGs are 300 uh, DPI. Mm -hmm. uh, 
can't, I didn't put that higher because at some point I run into this 32K pixel limit. But uh, if uh, 300 DPI is not enough, you can print it on a larger format, like if you want to have A0 with 600 DPI, you can generate, a, if you want to have A1 with 600 DPI, you can generate a, a zero with 300 DPI. Was it correct? Yeah, well you get the idea. <laughs> and some of the print jobs in Germany also accept PDFs now. Yeah. But I haven't tried that yet. <laughs> yeah, thanks for the great talk. Uh, I have a similar question in the press guy. Um, I have a 3,000 kilometer GPX track of a three week vacation I took. And, uh, too large. Too large, yeah. And the question is, if you say your limit is 20 by 20 kilometers, can that be tweaked when you run it locally? When you run that system yourself, can you like increase the range you can uh, render? Not, not really, because it's a database performance issue when things get too large. Okay. It is, uh, the MapNext stack is not really optimized for that, because mostly it is only used for gen generating map tiles, and these are only 500 mm -hmm. by, 12 by 512 pixels. And when things get larger, it gets slower. Oh, okay, uh, but you don't know any other tool or like mm. methods that could be used to mm. accomplish a print of that not, size? Not, not really. Oh. No, unfortunately, no. <laughs> okay. okay. Question: uh, At the local uh, version, can I set the timeout higher than yes. one hour? Yes. Yes. There is a settings local file in there and you can tweak settings in there. You can put a higher area and try out what happens. You can set a higher timeout. This is all configurable. Okay, it's just you. an hour for the public service to eventually have others have a chance if things take too long. Also, there's one over here. Um, how do you... Um and the localization in border areas where you have uh, multiple different languages? Uh, no, you can just choose one. Um, okay, so it will uh, always localize uh, one language? It will always try to localize into the chosen language if there is name information in that language available in OpenStreetMap. Okay. And for stuff there where it's really only the local name, it will just print the local name if it is using a Latin font. Mm -hmm. And if it uses uh, another font, like for Kyrillic, it will just transliterate more or less one by one. Okay. And for, like you've seen for Japanese, it tries to transliterate into something that sort of sounds like what the original says. Mm -hmm. So you can't uh, have the original languages of two countries at once? No. Okay. It's not that clever yet, no. Um, the hike and bike style, does it also contain information about height and slopes? Like the topographic? Uh, because for hiking and bi biking it um, might be useful too. No, but there, I think I was missing that slide. There is also uh, just the contour lines from the open topo map as an overlay. Mm -hmm. It does not look that good as in open topo map where it's integrated but it still gives you an idea of, of our landscape contour. Yeah, okay, no further questions? Then thank you for your patience with me. Thank you.